Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Good News Heroes on Unite Radio. I'm Trey. Do you remember what Ida Scudder planned to do when she went back to America? She was going to medical school to become a missionary doctor. What will happen to Ida next? Let's listen to find out. Ta-da! What do you think? Looks great. The white coat and stethoscope look very veterinarian-like. Do you recognize me? You're... Uh... Dr. Piper? No! I'm Mingyung Nicholson, the first woman veterinarian. She became a veterinarian in 1903, which is around the time that Ida became a doctor. You are? Oh, well, Dr. Mingyung Nicholson and Dr. Piper Cruz look exactly the same to me. Mom's gonna be Dr. Piper, from the future. That reminds me of something cool about Ida. She was in the first class of female medical students at the medical school she went to. Really? Were there no women doctors back then? Well, for a long time, no. A woman named Elizabeth Blackwell became the first female doctor only 50 years before Ida became a doctor. There still weren't that many American female doctors and even less female missionary doctors. Well, was Ida the first female missionary doctor to India? Actually, the first female missionary doctor came about 15 years before Ida, Clara Swain. But obviously, one was not enough. And the town where the Scudder family lived needed more female doctors. Ida worked hard in medical school, and in 1899, she officially became Dr. Ida Scudder. Yay, Ida! But she didn't go back to India right away. What? But I thought she wanted to go back to India. Well, she did, but like most missionaries, she had to fundraise the money she needed to live and work. If enough people donated money, she wouldn't have to get another job in India and could just focus on being a missionary. Missionaries have to raise money all by themselves? That sounds really hard. Raising money is a lot of work. Sometimes missionaries do it themselves, and some are part of a missionary organization that helps them raise money. Ida worked with an organization that helped teach her how to raise money, but she also had plenty of ideas from her parents. But raising money to be a missionary wasn't the only reason she needed money. What else did she need money for? A hospital. There wasn't one where Ida's father worked, just a clinic. Their area had been in need of one for a while, but never had the money. Since Ida was in America, she had a chance to raise money for it. She needed to raise about $8,000. Oh, huh. that's not so bad. Well, it's not so bad to us, but remember, Ida was raising money in 1899. Today, she would have needed to raise almost $300,000. What? That is so much more money. Yup, and sadly, raising money wasn't going well for Ida. Good morning, Ida! How did your meeting with your friend's church go last night? Not well, I'm afraid. Her church listened and agreed it's a good goal, but they already give money to so many other missionary efforts. They said they might be able to give me a few hundred dollars, but they couldn't promise anything. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I've got a letter for you. Maybe this has some good news. Addressed to Dr. Ida Scudder. How does it feel to see your new title in writing? It is nice, but I wish it would follow with, we'd like to donate to the Mission Hospital. Well, maybe this letter will have something for you. Maybe a donation. Nice try. It just says, please come visit me at my sister-in-law's house whenever you can. Mr. Robert Shell. Uh, Robert Shell? Do you know him? No, but I know of him. Ida, do you realize who he is? Someone at church last night introduced him as her brother-in-law, but that's all I know about him. He wasn't even in the room during my presentation. He's a very important banker in Manhattan, and he's very wealthy. This is wonderful. Maybe your friend told him about the hospital, and maybe he'll donate to it. <laughs> well, we'll see. But I don't want to get my hopes up. Ah, young Dr. Scudder, please come in. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Robert Shell. Good to see you again, Mr. Shell. Come, sit. 
I asked you over today because I heard about your hospital project and I have some questions. My uh, sister-in-law told me you're very passionate about it. Yes, sir, I am. You see, most of my family are medical missionaries in India. My grandfather was the first medical missionary to go to India, and my father and many others in my family did the same. Wow! Your family is making a big difference in India. So what are you and your family doing to continue the work? My brothers and cousins are carrying on the work of my father and his family. We try to show the people there God's love as we care for them and tell them about Jesus, the greatest healer. The people of India desperately need care for their bodies and souls, especially the women. Women in India have a special need for female doctors and a safe, clean place to get care. American women can be treated by male doctors, but India has many religious rules that don't let male doctors treat women. That's why I became a doctor. I saw what happens when these rules keep women from getting medical care. I can't change the rules, but I can care for the women and show them God's love. In order to give all of our patients the best care, we need a hospital. Well, praise God for using you to care for the women of India. But may I ask, who will be running the hospital? You only recently became a doctor, correct? So will it be one of your family members? Yes, my father will be running the hospital. He has many years of experience and is the perfect person to run the hospital. Some of my brothers and cousins are also medical missionaries in India. My father will train us so that one day we can take it over. Wonderful. It's good to hear that you won't be by yourself. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Shell? Of course. Why did you want me to come and talk about the hospital? Lately, I've been begging people to let me share about it, but you seem very excited about it. Well, it's because I am. You see, Dr. Scudder, my beloved wife, Mary, passed away not too long ago, and I've been asking God for a project I could dedicate to her memory, a project that will help others. Mary was very passionate about missionary work and had a heart for women in other countries who do not have the things we do. I think this is a project she would want me to support. Mr. Shell, that is so kind. I know you've been trying to raise $8,000. Is that for the entire hospital, equipment and all, or just the building? Just the building, but we're hoping more money will come for equipment while the hospital is being built. Well, a hospital without equipment is just any other building. I'd like to donate $10,000 for the building. And while you're in America, I'll take you shopping at the medical supply store, and I'll buy whatever you need. Really? Thank you, sir. You are an answer to prayer. How can I ever thank you? If you would, please dedicate the hospital to my beloved wife, Mary Tabor Shell. I know she would love what you're doing. I look forward to seeing how God uses it. Wow, that's so awesome! Ida's ready to go to India now. That's what Ida thought too. Ida and some missionary friends, including Annie, sailed for India. I knew it! I knew Annie would become a good news hero too. Exactly! She was so excited about missions. She was, and I bet she was especially excited to do it with a friend. On January 1st, 1900, they arrived in India. Ida and her family were so excited. But Ida soon realized that something was wrong. Oh, oh no. no. Are you ready, Father? Yes, just a moment. Are you okay? You seem like you don't feel well. <laughs> I'm getting old, Ida, but I'm all right. Let's go see our patients in the next village. Father, watch out! Whoa! <clears throat> Father, Father, are you all right? Oh, my pride is hurt worse than my body. Let me take a look at you. I'm fine, Dr. Scudder. <laughs> what are these lumps? Oh, these here? Nothing, really. Father, I know I'm a new doctor, but I recognize those lumps on your arms. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to bother you. You, you just got here and have so much to do already. And besides, it, 
It might be nothing. Cancer isn't nothing. Well, there's not much I could have done about it anyway. Our equipment here isn't used to treat cancer, and it's a hard disease to treat anyway. But there has to be something we can do to make it better. Cousin Lou has surgical experience. He could operate on you. Lou's busy enough as it is, and besides, the hospital isn't complete, and the next closest one's too far away. I think Lou would help his dear Uncle John. He could create an operating room in the clinic. Walter's close by. He and I can assist. If we can get the equipment, will you let Lou operate on the cancer? <sighs> oh, all right. Lou, Ida, where's Walter? And John? Walter is putting Father to bed, Mama. He's okay for now. How did the operation go? Uh, I'm sorry, Aunt Sophia. I couldn't remove all the cancer. I, I removed what I could, but it spread too far into his body. Oh. I know you took good care of him, Lou. Thank you so much. But what do we do now? I, I think we should call the rest of our family to see him soon. All we can do is hope and pray. But Ida needs her dad to help run the hospital. She hasn't even been back that long. That's one of the many things Ida was thinking about. Did her father get better? Well, now that, um, uh, you'll have to find out next time. Oh Again? man! Will Ida's father get better? Tune in next time to Good News Heroes to find out. Until then, check out our free devotional app, Unite Kids, for devotions, games, and memory verses just for you. You can download the app using the link in this episode's description. Bye!